Hey, Dimela, Dimela, me, get a kiss, they tell. They will look at you like, get like charm, because everything, uh, everyone that is selling shoes, they will give me this look like, yeah, hey, uh, that's poor, uh, that's poor. Uh, uh. Congratulations to all the matriculants who passed, you know, congratulations. And I'm so excited you guys are going to start a new chapter of life, you know. So today I'm going to be sharing my story about varsity. <laughs> okay, so I was this child who was nailing it in school. Grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4. I remember we had about um, we had about 40 kids in each class and we had 5 or 6 classes. Every term we would have a, a, we'd have a prize giving day. And I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what it meant. But I'll be number one. The whole grades. Like, the whole stream, you guys. Nobody would beat me. I was like, the most intelligent girl in class. So, um, because of my grades, I thought maybe in life I was going to be a, in the medicine or, you know. But what happened is that uh, my parents, they were fighting. My mother would sleep in the pre. Every day at 8 o'clock, there was a phone call that would come. And my mother would cry. And my grades started going down. Up until my mom and my dad divorced, you know. All those things. I changed schools maybe four or five times. It was changing, changing, changing. There was no stability in my life. Five or six. Six schools. All right. So... Anyway, I get to matric, stroke at Cambridge. In Cambridge, they call it advanced level. I finished my advanced level. So um, now it's time for me to go to university. As I go to university, I get the place. I'm offered the, the place at this university. And um, guys, I didn't have money for tuition. There was no bursary. There was no, you know. So um, I had to go call my uncle. I had to go to my uncle, travel to another city. Like being African, you guys, I want you to understand what it means being African. Travel from, from, this, from this city to another city. Get to my uncle, ask him to call my dad, to tell him that I have been offered a place. Who does that? Uh, like, you know, um, whenever our kids, like when my, when my daughter graduated, like grade ara, the grade ara, yes, I cried. And people were like, you guys, you like drama, why do you even cry? We cry because we're so excited about every achievement, about every, what do you call it? That, that word, yeah, that word. So every milestone, milestone achieved. So we cry. So now I'm in university and I think even you guys, like my age mates, you, you will be excited to see your kids in university. But look at me, my story now. I have to go and call my uncle, my uncle to call my dad to tell him that I've got a place. So anyway, he goes and calls my dad and my dad was like, you only call me when you want my money and what what. So I had no one to pay for my fees. Mm. That moment, no, don't make noise. That moment, I mean, that I'm um, that girl who loves school. Okay, so it's fine. I've got no one. I accepted it, and my heart was so broken. I think I've shared this story in my other story time. The time I left, I remember leaving that city, and I'm going back to the university in the other city. Uh, there was this song that was that was being played. It was it's by Mrs. Charamba. It was saying, "Um, where you Kunyang and I shall you a mari. And Dina Kurasikiro at Jehovah Mupen. That song, it's, it's saying, um, money is the most important thing in our life. Like, we need money in our life. But even though I have, I don't have money, even though I, I did not find money, that's what the, the words of the song are saying. Even though I did not find money, I know that I don't have any loss because God because my god is alive yo that song is playing and i'm crying okay we get to university first term yo this other guy called mr moyo he paid my school fees mr moyo thank you very much <laughs> i'm so grateful <laughs> but i'm not gonna talk about how we repaid mr moyo mr moyo wanted his money okay let me talk about it mr moyo wanted his money back so i paid my tuition i think my tuition by the time was maybe let's say about hundred dollars hundred US dollars which is about 1,800 and I did not have anyone to pay for me that money do you understand me so we borrowed the money from Mr. Moyo Mr. Moyo gave me the money and anyway we life goes on now uh, um, I come to a situation where 
I was forced to go to this university. I did not want because I knew we could not afford it. There were other universities which were even like government universities. They were even like cheaper, but it was Zim dollar, so I cannot rate it. But it was cheaper; we could afford it. So I'm taken to this private school. Now school fees, they introduce US dollars. So school fees goes from like our Zim dollars right to 500 US dollars. Guys, that time 500 was a lot of money. I think. In rands, it can be ten thousand, but those are. This is two thousand seven, two thousand eight. You know. Oh, okay. So I got now no one to pay my fees. So what do I do? The plan is um, that semester my fees was paid in Zim dollars. Now we are going. We are transitioning to US dollars. So what do I do? Somebody tells me go to Botswana and work. If you work in Botswana, you're gonna come with Pula. Pula is powerful. Then you pay your school fees. Guys, I want you to know that I walked this journey alone. Do you understand me? One. No, I'm not gonna say alone. It was not gonna be fair because my aunt would send groceries. So it was me and my aunt. My aunt would send groceries. Okay, so what what happens now? Um I get to Botswana. I try to work. Okay, before we get to Busan, I want you to know that I'm coming from a family with a lot of people, ne? A lot of people. People are minding their own business. You even ask guys, can you at least give me bus fare? They'll be like, I will give you, will give you. When it's time for you to go to school, nobody gives you bus fare. And I want you to know that those same people, they call me today and say, hi, Glory, please help us. We've got some financial needs here and there. <laughs> now people, they know me. The time I struggled. I get to Botswana. We get to Botswana with my aunt, the one who was sending me food. It was me and my aunt. I love that woman. It was me and my aunt. So we get to Botswana. We start looking for for jobs. So at first, when I went to Bots, I get to Botswana. I was washing clothes for people. I would wash clothes for people, um, like peace jobs. So they give you 20 pula. You guys, 20 pula is powerful. That this year is 2007. 20 pula was powerful. Guys, pullers are strong. She also, when you get your money, you keep it. Tomorrow you go, you keep it. You don't even use taxes because the money will finish. When you buy groceries, you buy groceries, you put in the chunk on the back. You put it right behind the couch. We're renting a place. I think they charge you maybe two pull up a night or something like that. It was cheap. The rent was cheap there. So we, we work now. We, I, the first time I go, oh, we are given two weeks. So in two weeks, you must work. Remember, this is when this is time when school, schools are closed, like varsity is closed, sim break. So we can, we go there. Is it sim break? What do you call it when schools are closed? If I can't remember. You guys, uh, it's been ten to fifteen years. I can't remember. So we we get there. I wake. I wash clothes. I make my few two hundred, three hundred puller. Ah, my days are finished. I go back to Zimbabwe. Then I go back. I come back again. This time I'm like, no. Let me at least try to buy shoes. You see shoes like your flip flops. These are very nice shoes made by um, goat skin. Like these are handmade shoes made by goat skin. But because we because we do not appreciate this one is drinking milk and it's gonna be making noise. Because we do not appreciate our economy, or maybe being being um, like because in Africa we don't appreciate handmade things, hand handmade things. We don't. We don't put value on them. They're not very expensive, you know, but they were expensive. So I bring these shoes. Then I met this other lady. We go to Palape. Palape? Yes, Palape in Botswana. We get to Palape. We started walking door to door, door to door selling shoes, door to door selling shoes. This lady had 50, 60, 100 shoes. She will finish them. One, two, pa, 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 pa. Finish. And she told me that she went to those people, the Masoe. Do you know Masoe, guys? <laughs> But so where are people who are like those people apostol apostolic church they they wear white clothes they worship so she said she went there and they gave you a lucky charm okay so me i'm coming adventist as i am i don't even have a lucky charm we would walk the whole day that lady will sell all the shoes and i mean mine will finish that lady will come three days the shoes are, are finished she goes back to zim to, to get some more me <laughs> So I go door to door, door to door, door to door. Nobody buys my shoes. Okay, what do I do now? I think, let me go to the bus rink. So I get to the bus rink. 
the, these buses would come like these buses in Botswana they are so big like you guys those, you know that time till we had chicken buses and all they are very big buses so if you try to say shoes down down outside the bus nobody's gonna see you so I get inside the bus then I, I, I'll be selling ah, I'm selling shoes and the people would give do you know you are so desperate at that moment you are oh. very desperate because you want to sell you're desperate from one sale you want to sell and people would look at you like you sell and you were trying to say hi Demela Demela me Garekis Detlao they look at you like oh okay yeah they look at you like I don't know you guys I felt like there was this this charm that I had a bad like charm because every uh, everyone that has selling shoes they would give me this look like yeah it's hey, uh, boring uh, 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 okay uh, I tried to sell the shoes uh, nobody buys the shoes uh, from the bus uh, okay uh, now I go to door to door door to door door to door looking for looking what <laughs> you trying to sell shoes ah <laughs> oh, this life you guys the most painful thing is I'm a child with both parents but I'm trying to find the school fees for myself. <laughs> anyway, I wish I could get a sponsor, somebody who was gonna sponsor me and pay my, my tuition. You, have you ever been poor so that everyone in life they know that this one is struggling? So that now when they see me, I remember somebody saw me, they saw me driving a car. Okay, this is not just a car, an SUV. They saw me driving an SUV and they were like, the, that person was heartbroken. Because that, that guy in university, he, he had, like his fees was paid on time, he had everything. Then he finished the degree, he got the job, did he get the job? I think he worked here. Yeah. He got the job, he saw me driving that car. His heart, hello. He, he, he later called and said, my heart was, like he felt so much jealous. How can she drive an SUV when she was this poor girl? Okay, so remember my song. I said the money is the um, like pillar of your life. No, it's the song. My stop no. making no. You're making noise. Wait. Money is the pillar of life. If you don't have life, money, you have not lost anything because God is alive. Ha! You think God is alive? I'm telling you. Today, if you do not have money and you need this money for your tuition or what what. You never understand. You don't know how your life will take time. Life is not life is not like a Nigerian movie where it's predictable. Good. When you go get to you, you get there. You are the most intelligent girl in class. You try to find anyone to pay fees. Nobody pays your fees, so you're going to struggle. That's not life. You never struggle. Never. As long as God is alive. Anyway, I started walking door to door, door to door, trying to sell these shoes. Nobody sell, buys the shoes. I remember that day I was so hungry. I walked, guys, Palape is big. I walked from the junction. I don't know if you guys know. I, those, those in Botswana, you know. I walked from the junction right, in, right to the, I think it's Kuro or Spark School, right at the end of the village. I'm walking, I'm walking. Then I get to this preschool. It's an Adventist. No, it's not a preschool. I get to this place. So this place, um, it's a house, a council, town, town council houses. I get there. I'm like, do Coco, Coco, do Mela. So as I'm approaching Coco, there were kids outside. They were like, quare, 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 hey, quare, quare. Hey. Okay right at the moment i don't want to, I, I okay now um, it doesn't hurt me but i it, was, it really broke my heart they're calling me query query you when they see you they know that there is a query query coming <sighs> okay anyway i don't blame those kids it's it's us adults who instill these things in kids kids are bro are born with white pages their brain is white even i remember my neighbor my neighbor's child is white my daughter and my neighbor they play together they don't see color they don't see color they they they, they, they she sees a friend that boy sees shaky a human being but the moment you guys you parents you come you instill your hatred you instill your you, you know you know you instill bad things in your kids so they they call me quite 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 I get the yeah. I'm like Domela, give it a lot of I did I then I left. Yo! Mm. So basically I stopped selling those shoes because ah. I'm a Liman. I stopped selling those shoes because nobody was buying them. And remember I have to raise five hundred US dollars. Who's gonna help? Nobody.
I got a relative that is out of the county that you can think they can help you. Nobody. Nobody. So, ah, we come back. Then I go back to my peace jobs again. You're making noise. I go back to my peace jobs. Ah, man. So, I go back to my, to my peace jobs. I start doing washing clothes, washing clothes. But remember, this man is a lot. I wash clothes, I wash clothes, I wash clothes. Ah, I raise maybe two or three hundred pull or four hundred pull. Um, but I want five hundred dollars. So what do I do? My aunt tells me that. Mm -hmm. ah, ah, ah. My aunt tells me that you know what, girl? What you can do? This is a lot of money. What you can do is go to the farmer, to the vet, veterinary. They sell injections for cows. So go there. Don't make noise. Go there and buy injections for cows. So I go there, get injection, injections, injections for dairy cows. I get. I, guys, yes, I saw all the man. Guys, yes, I saw all the man. Yo, I get. I buy all the injections, 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 injections for cows, for milking. There's this. I did not even know these things. There's um. There's this cream that they use for milking cows. I buy all the man that I had. I buy. Remember, I had also groceries in the house. Guys, in Botswana, things were hard. So. So you would get hungry and you would be having groceries. But remember, you remember where you're coming from. Where you're coming from, there's no food. So you can't eat that food. I remember I lost weight up to 45 kgs. 45 kgs. Anyway, it's fine. So I get my, my injections. But by the border, you cannot go with them because you'll be arrested. So what you do, you, you get a box. In Botswana, there are boxes of Omo, like box. They don't have plastic, it's a box. So you open that box, you put your injections, put your injections inside. They'll be like in there. You put them inside the Omo, then you put Omo on top. Then you seal it back. So basically, I was just smuggling things out of the country because I can't pay duty. And then I take them to Botswana, to Zim. Don't, guys, don't come for me, okay? Don't arrest me. I take them to Zim. So I get them to Zim. At my first day, they had cows, like they had lots of cows. Then I get there to this guy. So I go to go and talk to these people. They say what? They sell, they sell, they, they, they've got cows. Go sell them because there are farms there. Okay. So there are farms. Get back to the farms. You sell this what? This medicine. So I go. I get to this farm. You guys, they wrote a check for me. They wrote a check. Because prices, things are exorbitant exorbitant expensive you get things in Botswana very cheap you get there you could pull at the price I again they they wrote a check for me I go and pay my fees I paid my fees my tuition then I'm in, enrolled I've got food I've got um, my, 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 my paycheck my check I saw that I did I did a deal I managed and I, I, I remember when I bought all the injections I, I, I remained with the bus fee but the taxi that I got onto they said we're gonna take it to Blawai when we get to the border shh, when you get to Francis town they said I Tina we're not we're not we're not go, going no, stop doing that not Fra Francis town by the border when you get to the border they say I we can't take you any any further I'm left with 20 pool Again, on the other side, ah, on the other side, the things, the Zim dollar would have changed. There are so many zeros, guys. There are so many zeros. They're like, ah, it's 20 pull is not enough. Give us some other groceries. So I gave them some other groceries. Then I found my way to where? To go Blawai. Get to, to Blawai. Ah, when I'm in Blawai, I'm home. I found transport. I found transport. Then I get to school. I went to university. So basically, my life was a life of struggle. I don't want to lie. No, man, stop making noise. I don't want to lie. My life was a life of struggle. I struggled to go to first city. I struggled and I had to see myself. I, I remember there was a semester when I went to, to, to first city without even Vaseline. <laughs> hey! Uri, you'll be coming from people. They'll be like, yeah, go to school. Yeah, see, see, go to school. Bye. I have nothing. That moment you're thinking, so what am I going to do? You get to varsity, Then you're told, ah, your fees has been paid. Uh. Guys. I said in the beginning of the video, money is the pillar of our lives. We need money. But if you don't get money, I have not lost anything because Jehovah is alive. So, my life it's not it's not been a life an easy life it's been a, like a difficult life i remember there was a time when i cried and said god why is it that everything that i have to do everything that i have to do why is that it, it can be soft it has to be a life of pushing 
pushing you try to to go to university doing good things not like you are doing anything but you push you get to put on you try to sell shoes nobody buys them you push you 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 you, you even give birth giving birth in giving birth it has to be like why god why is it that my life has to be a difficult life you said that's my life you guys that has been my life i don't want to lie but i said jehovah is alive okay jehovah is alive so you guys this is the end of this video i need to, to edit and upload it today it's a tuesday because today tuesday a video is supposed to be up and i hope you are happy that i did the story time <laughs> but remember i told you the story of the suv when people look down upon you they think you never make it in life i like closing my eyes when people think you never make it in life you will make it in life not the um, the logic way not not but by god's way god's way if god says yes in life you'll make it i told you about the suv okay nobody thought i would drive the suv they are there those people are there with their masters and phds and they're still working Bye. <laughs>